word come out as it is written. Isaiah 59 and 19 says, When the enemy comes in, and I know the King James there, King James says, When the enemy comes in like a flood, comma, and I like to move that comma back up there, when the enemy comes in, comma, like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against him. Amen. Amen. Power. Power from on high. We tap into that power. It allows that standard. I remember as a young young believer in the, <clears throat> reaping the consequences of, of a life of drugs and alcohol and, and, and a tormented mind and all of that. You know, I've given my heart to the Lord, but I was still reaping <coughs> seeds that I had sown in my life. And I remember that uh, the enemy had, was trying to kill me through just very bad health because of the drugs and the alcohol and all that stuff. And uh, many times that I, I would uh, I went to church and, and I'd be down in on the floor between the pews. I was going to church. I was going to the hospital. I needed faith. I needed to hear the word. And I was going to hear it. I was, I was in critical condition. I had to come to the emergency room. Yeah. Amen. And so I would come and even though I may not have been able to see who was speaking, I could hear them. But anyway, I remember one night I went home and I was so deathly ill. And I went to bed. I'd fallen asleep. I woke up and there's these death angels standing at the foot of the bed. Like, how did I know that they were dead? You know, they looked like grim reapers, you know. They're standing there and they're, they're bumped, their heads are bumped up against the ceiling. And, and I'm laying there thinking, gosh. And it was like when I opened my eyes and became aware, it was like they became aware and they started and they looked at me and all of a sudden, I hadn't been taught this. I mean, all of a sudden, there was a standard that raised up. I felt it raised up inside of me. And I just, I was screaming there. I was yelling at them and, and my God didn't save me for you bums to haul me out of here. You know, and I was just... You know, I started rebuking them in the name of Jesus. And I just, I felt that power coming forth. And they were gone. And it was from that time forward that faith came up. And I just received my healing. My healing started manifesting. And I was just, just started to fall on the enemy. And so, you know, when the enemy tries to come in like that, we just, you know, we've got to be able to tap in. Tap in and let that standard, that power raise up in us. And what we need to realize that, you know, if the enemy went after the Son of God, he's going to come after us. Amen. He's going to, come, he's going to try to sift you and I the same way. Jesus told Peter in Luke twenty two thirty one. 31, he said, Simon, be, behold, Satan has desired to sift you like wheat. He wants you. So did Jesus remove Satan? Did he remove the trial? No. He didn't. He said, I've prayed for you, Peter, that your faith would not fail. And when you are converted, strengthen your brothers. Well, he was just speaking faith all over. He was prophesying to him. When you're converted, you're going to get through this. You're going to come through. The Lord will always give us something to hang on to. You hang on to that. Amen. Praise God. In 1 John 3 and 8 it says, For this purpose was the Son of God made manifest that He might destroy the works of the devil. And I believe for this purpose we have been commissioned to do the same thing. I believe it. I believe we have. Praise God. Jesus said in John 14 and 12, Verily I say to you, He that believes on me the same works that I do, Shall he do also, and even greater works than he shall he do, because I go to my Father. Amen. I believe this means that Je since Jesus was willing to go to the cross, and then he said it's expedient, it's necessary that I do this, and he ascended to the Father. He said, if I don't, he won't be able to send you this, the, another comfort. He won't be able to send you the, the mighty divine help that you need. And so his power... His Holy Spirit was poured out, power from on high, to empower us to carry on these same works. Amen. Our mission is to expose and to destroy the works 
of the devil. Amen. I believe one of these days we're going to be held accountable. The Lord's going to look. I give you power. What did you do with it? What did you do with it? Well, I'll just, I'll let him do it. I was too afraid. But where's the power at? Yeah. There won't be any excuse. We've been filled with power. What happens is we look at ourselves. We're not looking at the power. Our eyes are on us and our eyes are not on Jesus. It's as simple as that. We're look, I'm looking at me. I'm not looking at Jesus. Well, it, just, it, it feels uncomfortable. That's the stretching. <laughs> Amen. He kind of, you know, the Lord came to comfort the afflicted and to afflict the comfortable. So he stretches us, and when we all get one mind and one accord, there is nothing that we can't accomplish. All things are possible to them that believe. That believe. The thing is, do I believe? Do I believe? Do I believe he's given me power? Has he equipped me to do this? And I'll never know until I get out and walk on the water. Get out of the boat. And do it. And believe me, each time that you do it, the next time you won't just kind of, you'll just jump out of the boat. Where's that stinking devil at? You know, you're ready. And it'll and get easier and easier. Praise God. And, and the Lord understands all that. Amen. But we got to use it. Jesus said in Mark 16 and 17, And these signs shall follow them that believe. Do we have them? Do we have those signs? He's given us power. These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall cast out devils. And there's, there's many other things that he said that we could do. Amen. We just got to tap into the power. And coming down to verse 20, it says, And, and they went forth. He was talking to his disciples. They went forth, preached everywhere. The Lord working with them. That he didn't abandon them. He didn't, he didn't uh, forsake them. That he, Lord working with them, talking about the power, confirming the word. Confirming the word. It all lines up. Praise God. All right. Finally, number six, God empowers us in our relationships with one another. I believe this is very important. Since we've got to work together, it's important that we have good relationships. It's important that we learn how to get along. Say, I love you, Pastor Larry. I love you, Pastor Larry. <clears throat> All right. A lot of people, they try to retreat from people instead of allowing the power of God to perfect them in their relationships. I know it's just a lot easier just to... You know, but that's not what God says to do. Do you find that in the Word? He wants to perfect us in our relationships. My Bible says that heaven, you know, there's going to be a lot of people in heaven. So, it's obvious, I think, that we need to learn how to get along with each other. And it's not like something just, we're going to be robots or androids or anything like that. It's going to be the love of God. It's going to bring this to pass. Allowing the love of God to flow in our lives. Proverbs 27 and 17 says, Iron sharpens iron. So a man sharpens the countenance of a friend. So we sharpen one another. We don't go out in the woods and, and sharpen by a tree. You know, we sharpen one another. The word going forth. You know, a lot of people, they don't know how to establish and how to keep friendships or relationships. And so what I see people do, they, they continue to burn the bridges of, of what could be and should be meaningful relationships. You know, there's a lot of divine appointments in our lives where we will meet people. But the enemy, he wants to, he wants to put schisms there. Now, they can either, they can either sharpen us. And we can learn how to, to overcome those things, those differences and those schisms and, and, and allow the love of God. You know, we